Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Monday live stream. We got a lot of things to go over, so let's just jump right in. And today, we're going to talk about is essentially what well, we've uh, the most interesting topic I think on YouTube would be price predictions. Now, I like a good price prediction. I think everybody else does. Uh, they're fun and they're joyous, and we can take a look at them. And go, that looks good, and that looks good. But in reality, they're worthless. So let's just take a look at some of the things that have been going on right now. So this is from Washer Guru. If you don't follow him on X, great uh, account to actually follow to get up to date with what's actually happening right now. And he says, just in, Standard Chartered Bank raises its Bitcoin price target to 150000 this year and 250000 by end of 2025. So what you're probably going to see is uh, a lot of YouTube thumbnails and a lot of people with their, their uh, mouth open. And they're going to be like, let 250000 150,000, whatever else it is. So don't get uh, distracted by this because who knows? It could go much higher, <laughs> much lower. Nobody really knows. And one thing about I've, I've seen since being in this industry since 2017 is that when one person gets a price prediction right, they run off that price prediction for years and always point back to that one that they got right, totally neglecting the fact that they got 20 or so different wrong. So let's just break this down. I actually had, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, I've heard Charter Bank before. I know they've made price predictions. So let me just ask uh, Gemini, uh, which was, which used to be called BARD. Uh, that is from Google, the uh, AI software or the AI program that you can uh, just ask questions, do a lot of good things. And AI runs some, some backgrounds and gives you the answer and spits it out. I said, hey, give me a list of all the Bitcoin price predictions given by Standard Chartered and the dates they gave those predictions. And uh, Gemini spits out and says, yeah, there was two. And this was on March 18th. And uh, that's it. And then there was one like a couple of months ago. That's all it says. I'm like, no, I don't think that's actually true. Which again, AI is great, but it's got a little flaws. And this was actually in September 8th, 2021. And this was from Standard Chartered. Bitcoin price to hit 100K in 2021 or early 2022, somewhere around those. And of course, this was during uh, one of the heights of the bull mania. Now, we hit uh, a high of around 63,000 for Bitcoin roughly in April of 2021. Then we took a little bit of a dip, but everybody was super bullish and talking about how great it's going to be. And of course, September was a pretty good month. Leading to October and November, we hit an all-time high of 67,777, somewhere around there. Some people will say it was 69K, some people say 67K, whatever. It all depends on the different exchanges that you took a look at. Of course, the the price, of course, varies, and I think that's a little bit of a manipulation. That's a whole other video. So again, uh, Standard Chartered, great. I mean, they kind of messed this one up, but uh, you know, if they nail this one uh, over here for 250K, you better believe they're gonna run off that for a long time. And that would lead me to another piece here, which was, I was just wondering, I'm like, how many price predictions are, are out there? And uh, this was a pretty good piece. Uh, this was from CNBC, the boldest Bitcoin predictions for 2024. This is on December 31st, 2023, which of course we had not gotten the ETF approval yet. People were expecting that to happen, except for me, and I was 100% wrong. I think we, <laughs> we, can, we can all agree on that one. I was totally wrong. I didn't think that was going to actually uh, make it through. Again, predictions, worst things of all time. Uh, commentators CNBC spoke to both inside and outside of the crypto industry have given various price predictions for Bitcoin, ranging from 60,000 to $500,000. I'm like, that's pretty good. Let's see what those price predictions are. This is from uh, Mark Mobius. I'm like, who the heck is that? Mark Mobius uh, claims to be the Indiana Jones of emerging market uh, investing. He's been on CNBC and MSNBC quite a bit. And he's actually had some, some pretty good calls in the past. And he talks about, he's like, look, it's only going to hit 60,000. That's pretty much it. In 2022, Mark Mobius correctly forecast Bitcoin would drop to 20,000 when it was trading above 28,000, which he got right. And actually it went to $15,700. So on this one, Mark was 100% correct. However, he had a price called 10,000 thereafter, which he stuck to all the way into 2023. And how many people do you know, especially in the social media uh, reference ranges, and they have been talking about how, you know what, I'm going to, I think that Bitcoin's, uh, it's popping off, but I think it'll come back down. Of course, 15K is in play, 10K is in play, or whatever else they're actually saying. And Mark was like, look, in 2023, like it could still go down. Now, obviously that didn't work out, another price prediction, which is why I need to stress to you uh, enough that if you listen to price predictions, 
and you kind of base your whole kind of philosophy around that, uh, it's going to be a disaster, quite honestly. So, of course, there's a lot of different uh, places to go to actually figure out what a good strategy is. And that is probably the worst strategy you can possibly do. Me personally, what I do is I thought that once we hit 15.7, I go, and I even said this numerous times, I thought we could go to 12K. I'm like, well, I think Bitcoin go 12K. And everybody would ask me, well, are you going to stop buying? I'm like, what are you saying? If it goes to 12K, I'm going to buy even more. It's called dynamic DCAing. And if it goes on to 10K, I'm going to buy even more. So when we see these things, just kind of realize that uh, maybe there's an ulterior motive. Maybe these price predictions aren't the greatest things of all time. Now, having said that, uh, Bit Mining said, hey, 75,000 could be in play. And uh, Yo Wai Yang, chief economist of crypto mining firm Bit Mining, believes that Bitcoin could reach a high of 75,000 by 2024. And of course, he says, hey, in this, in this year, it could be 25K to 75K and then 45 to 130K. And this is good for newbies and people who are in the, the place and they say, oh, CoinShares is 80,000. Nexos is 100,000. Standard Charter, 100,000, which they just revised. We took a look at. Uh, Carol, I don't know who that is. Matrix Port, 195,000. And then Coi, Coin Fund says, hey, we could go from 250 to 500,000. And that is a good article to run with, especially for clicks. This was from Seth Gins. I think I said that right. Managing partner at Coin Fund. He says, Bitcoin has a strong inverse correlation with the dollar and real yields, and both are now going down, which he, that's accurate. We are. We also expect the follow through inflows post launch of the Bitcoin spot ETF, as well as growing excitement around the likely approval of uh, Ether spot ETFs later in 2024 will be quite meaningful. Now, look, I didn't get that. Bitcoin spot ETF, right? But a lot of the different industry insiders will say, yeah, that's Ethereum ETF. It's going to be very tough. And we don't think it's actually going to be approved in 2024, maybe in a couple of years, but we'll see. So again, to talk about all these things, it's just a little bit crazy. And here's one of the crazy other ones that people were pointing to, Citibank. And this was actually a city analyst. And of course, you, 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 you think to yourself, okay, it's city, it's Citibank. They've got some pretty good analysts in there. City analysts said in November 2020 that Bitcoin could climb, climb as high as $318,000 by the end of 2022. It closed last year at <laughs> 16.5. So again, a little bit of crazy. But if you want to see some other price predictions, here's some big stuff. Citigroup said 318K. We just took a look at that. Bloomberg said 100K. That was going to happen in 20. That didn't happen. Peter Schiff. I don't know who that is. He says zero. Peter Brandt uh, in 2023 said we hit 100K. That wasn't right. Ray Dalio, which everybody respects. I uh, said that uh, Bitcoin would hit 50K in 2023, eh, whatever. JP Morgan, 146K. And then, of course, then it said, now nah, 38K, <laughs> Goldman Sachs. So again, if you want to rely on these, it's just insanity. But it is fun sometimes to talk about it. And having said all that, here's my Bitcoin price prediction. <laughs> my prediction has always been the same. Bitcoin in 2024 will be in the range because I think ranges are, are acceptable, between $5 and $500,000. So somewhere in that range, Bitcoin will fall to. I am 93% sure it'll be in that range. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments section. Now let's talk about Solana. So first of all, before we go on, I own Solana. I own a lot of it. I own a lot of Solana. I own a lot of I own a lot of Cosmos. I own a lot of Cardano. I own a lot of pick the L1. I probably own it. And uh, so when I talk about these things, it's just it's coming from a person who's taking a look from the outside in and saying, "Hey, there's some there might be some problems here." Now, if you're big into Solana, you might not say that this is an issue, but I think there's something to be said. And I said uh, I put this tweet out. I said Solana under pressure with all the meme coin volume, but still holding. And I said, you know, the thoughts. And of course. You know, Shark Toshi. I mean, it just depends on, on, on what you believe in. And he says, look, things like Bohm hit one billion in a day and got Binance listing, which is true. If that's not the most obvious scam retail rung chain, I don't know what is. I guess people have short memories and 2022 wasn't enough. They want to get it harder this time. Nova Dow says, I keep being amazed at what Sol and the tokens are, are things are doing or so. Ben shares says take profits. And my, my buddy Steven, who is probably one of the biggest Solana meme coin bulls said it perfectly. I got many failed transactions this morning. I basically gave up. So I know people will later in the comments, I'll say, you don't know you're talking about. It's just not a big deal. And I've had no problems, no issues. Some people have. 
I've also had issues myself. So what's going on? There is a great site called soulscan.io. Don't take my word for it. I'm just some guy talking to his computer in front of a very nice green screen. And you can take a look at different data analytics for Solana and just kind of go from there. When I pulled this up, let me pull out the average ping time. And you take a look at TPS, it's still good, right? Uh, total TPS, 2,000 plus, 2,300, 2,400. This was in March. This is today. Total TPS, 700. So everything's going good. But then this average ping time looks like there's been some losses. 40% loss, 57.95 confirmed. 34% loss, 63 of 96 confirmed. So quite a bit of a little losses here in these two areas. This was today. But it looks like it's going along smoothly. So yes, it's not perfect. That is true. And I guess there's been things that have happened. So maybe there's a little bit of a stress going on, but that's what you're supposed to do, right? You're supposed to test everything and do as much as you possibly can and then try to break it and try to make it better. That's the whole thing. So as far as Solana Analytics, I mean, look, I tried to use it and then there were some issues. That's true. But uh, taking a look at the data today, right now, as we see is like the TPS, like we just took a look, took a look at. It, this one goes to March 17th though. TPS is 1700, success rate 99.95%, looking okay. Validators, I know people will make fun of this. They say it's actually two, but it says 2000, but who knows how many are in control of the Solana Foundation? <laughs> I don't know. That's that. That's for the whole upgrade, um, fire dancer, we'll see. And then coming down here, look at this, transactions. I know people will talk a lot about this, but vote transactions, there's a big difference between voting transaction and non-votes. So even if we take a look at the non-vote, oh, I might do that. Even when we take a look at the non-vote itself, look at this. I mean, it's still got a ton of transactions going on, 23 million. Of course, it only goes to, hold on, that can't be right. There we go, March 17, 24 million, 23.9 million, 25 million, so on and so forth. And then uh, eh, it's doing pretty good, I guess. And then accounts. Now, this one was interesting to me because if we're taking a look at like mass adoption, I'm always curious to see like how many wallets are actually being created and actually used. And in seven days, you went from active wallets of, well, let's just go back here. One, roughly 1 million. Yeah, 1 million, 67,000. And then March 15th, 1.2, that's pretty good. And then it went from 1.2 to, what the heck, 2.4 million active wallets. That's crazy. What's going on? Meme coin season, apparently. But if we zoom out, let's take a look at a month. Okay, you got me on that one. How about three months? Okay, you still got me on that one. Uh, well, how about all time? Yeah, you know, like back in the heyday, when Solana was going crazy, April 25th, 2021, it's all time high. It was at uh, active wallets of 3.7 million, but still doing pretty good. And then uh, new token accounts, seven days. That's not a big deal. How about a month? Okay. Well, I think people are getting into some new tokens, whatever those may be. Probably meme coins. How about three months? Okay. That's crazy. So, wow, three million. How about all time? Damn. Look at that. It actually eclipsed its all-time high of April 23rd. Did it? 3.412, 3.467. So yeah, new token accounts is uh, is up there. So yes, there was a little bit of a stress. Yes, it's going on, but hey, that is what it is. And even I had problems. So I can't deny that. And that's how it is. I'm just telling you that uh, I know some people will say Solana has no problems. And some people on the other side will say Solana is nothing but problems. But for me, it still works just have some issues sometime. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments section. And lastly, well, second to last, Cardano. I didn't know what the heck was going on this morning, but this was all, it's about Cardano and World Mobile Token and side chains and partner chains. And I woke up to this because people kept referencing this to me and I'm like, oh, let me take a look. This is from, uh, the head of the Cardano Foundation. I don't know if that's even his title anymore, Charles Hoskinson. And uh, he's talking about World Mobile Token, which is, I love that project. It's trying to connect the unconnected. It uses aerostats and the World Mobile Token and Earth nodes, which we are an operator, just so full disclosure. And uh, I think it's doing good things. But they're branching out. So here's what we got. Charles says, uh, with respect to World Mobile, 
The goals of their projects require the construction of a global scale, heterogeneous protocol that handles complex hardware that is literally flying in the air, the aerostats, licensed spectrum, user-driven network growth, future proofing, quantum reality we are headed towards, no current system. I, I wanna say this a couple of times, and I have to applaud Charles for saying this, no current system in the entire blockchain ecosystem is capable or has technology to resolve a project at this scale involving billions of users. I have to applaud that because you are not having a founder saying like, look, this is just a misunderstanding. We can actually make this. But he's like, look, we have issues too. We aren't where we want to be, obviously, right? Is any company exactly where they're supposed to be at the right place at the right time and doing everything perfectly? Obviously not. But they're saying like, look, World Mobile Token, they're doing the things they're supposed to do. And if they go multi-chain, which they did, then that's fine. And I think that's where we're supposed to go. I think that's what we're supposed to do for all these altcoins. Now, Bitcoin's a totally different story. We can discuss that later. But as far as altcoins actually doing something, I can see this. And he, uh, to finish up, he says, we noticed a repeat misunderstanding among some, some in the community that a partnership a partner chain is not Cardano. That's false. He says, look, if they want to do a partner chain or a side chain for AYA, which is their side chain on Cardano, then let them do that. The point of partner chain is to provide a framework to this while being secured by Cardano. So partner chains, Cardano. Enjoying the remarkably solid infrastructure that's been running nonstop for 2,300 days, 24 seven. So look, I know some people despise Cardano and some people love Cardano. But, I mean, you really can't take away from the fact that they've been up essentially the entire time that they've created the project. Can every, can every single project out there say that? No, not even Solana. And that's why I diversify. But anyhow, I get a lot of comments for that. Again, repeated thousands of times since the beginning, we said interoperability is a pillar of a third-gen blockchain. Even if the numbers go up, crowd, cross-chain transactions are always good for network value. I applaud that. That makes sense. Multi-chain. World Mobile Coin is trying to connect the unconnected, not just the kernel unconnected and screw the rest of the industry. Every human should be connected by a decentralized network with equal and fair rules. The point of partner chains is to provide a model for how to do this as we are demonstrating with Midnight. And that's true. We should all be using as many decentralized networks and projects as we possibly can. And this would actually, this is a, a discussion I actually had with, with Titus Wallet because there was an issue with them going down. Titus Wallet is a, is, a, is a wallet for Solana. And I'm like, what are you guys using for like, for like backups and for, for cloud? He's like, oh, we're using uh, Akash because we believe in decentralization. I'm like, well, that may be true, but it's, you know, Akash was down and that means you're, the, we had an issues with your wallet. He's like, well, it's decentralization. At some point, it'll all catch up. And then we took a look at other wallets that are out there and they're not doing that. They're using AWS or some other type of centralized protocol to move their wallets around. So yeah, if we wanna go the, the decentralized route, it's gonna be a little bit bumpy. And then I just kind of asked the question like, what's the big deal? And then people gave me their answers and Ada Ape says, <laughs> crypto. some people who hadn't been paying attention got confused and tribal. The team in Charles Rude, what was already happening, I got agreed there. And just as a reminder, I don't understand the problem because this was back in August 4th, World Mobile Token announced that they're going to use other chains. And the chains that they chose were BNB, Binance Smart Chain, and Ethereum. So I still don't get the problem. But here we are, just wanted to bring it out to the light and uh, see what the issue is. I think that's where we're supposed to go. Anyhow, let me just think about that, the comments. And then lastly, before we get to Q&A, we had a really good time yesterday. We talked about AI and some different various projects. One of those projects that we talked about yesterday was Aether. Aether, I always, I always say this wrong. A-E-T-H-I-R. And just this morning, apparently they had a uh, node sale. They sold out $20 million worth of, worth of nodes. And this is a big uh, D-Pin AI play. And they're pretty much going against a lot of the big players, but a lot of good backing. And if you want to know more about it, my man, uh, Jesus Martinez, did a fantastic video yesterday about why he's going big on these nodes and why he thinks Aether is going to do really well. So I link that in the description in the video. You can check that out, as well as the video that we talked about of all the different AI plays that we're getting into from yesterday. So that is it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. We talk about it's time sensitive now. 
If you're so inclined, uh, we'll do a little Q&A, answer all your questions to the best of my abilities, and we'll go from there. We got to take off, take off. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you.